Yeah, so, so yeah, morning, Dave. Uh, thanks for giving up your time to speak with me this uh, this morning. I do appreciate it. Are you um, South African? That's correct, yes. Yeah, yeah I, thought you, I thought you was. Um, yeah, uh, basically, the, um, the, the purpose of the meeting, I, I'm a YouTuber. I've got a YouTube channel called DIY Herbs, and we specialise in teaching people how to um, do things in terms of how to keep reptiles and amphibians, how to make the, the equipment themselves. And because Madagascar's got such a, a massive amount of species, like panther chameleons, day geckos, leaf-tail geckos, tomato frogs and golden mantellas, they're all species that we commonly keep in the UK. And I feel like um, my subscribers would really appreciate the opportunity to be able to actually go to Madagascar and, and help out and, and ex experience uh, nature for themselves. So I'm just wondering, um, what, would you be, be able to tell us more about yourself and, and your organization? Yeah, you know, we started um, this uh, volunteer program uh, on Nosikomba Island about nine years ago, uh, mainly to help the locals and to, to try and increase conservation in the area. Our original um, arrangement was with the Oceanographic Research Institute. Uh, we did a lot of uh, we did a lot of work with them, uh, mainly on coral reef restoration, and uh, some research work on uh, nudie brands, seahorses, and a few other things. And um, we then started teaching English in some of the schools, the local schools, and from there we ventured into the forest because they've got uh, they've got um, a lot of local lemurs around that are are becoming endangered. And there's a lot of deforestation, which is a really critical problem in Madagascar. And um, with the deforestation, obviously, you know, the, the dwindling habitat of many of these, um, of these uh, small creatures that, uh, that dwell in the forest. And um, we started a, a program to, uh, to um, reforest some of the island. And that's been very successful. We've done that in collaboration with the um, Botanical Society of Madagascar in conjunction with the university at Antanarivo. So that's coming along, along quite nicely. But um, deforestation is a huge problem. And, and, and obviously, um, a lot of the reptile species and various other, other bird species are, are having problems because of it. Um, so uh, we set up this base uh, somewhere where uh, uh, people could come and enjoy the environment. And uh, we try and uh, keep our, our footprint um, as uh, neutral as possible there. We run on solar panels and things like that. We use natural water out of the mountains. Um, we don't, um, we don't, uh, uh, we've got a policy of, 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 uh, of not cutting down any trees. We've got a, a little program that we've introduced where we remove some of the alien species and we convert in those reeds into straws, drinking straws for local hotels and restaurants and pubs for them to try and move away from the plastic uh, straws, which are obviously impacting negatively on, uh, on our oceans. So we've got all these little programs in place. Um, we've had a couple of universities come out there and use our facilities to run studies. And then we try and facilitate those studies because there's generally a lot of permit requirements in Madagascar, especially if you want to take um, specimens back to, uh, uh, you know, back to uh, the US or the UK or whatever the case is. So that's really what we've been involved in. And uh, um, uh, through that, we got involved in community related uh, programs, building programs, schools, clinics and things like that. So that sounds really interesting. Yeah. So because de deforestation is such a massive issue, you're trying to you're replanting areas of the forest and taking out various invasive species, did you say, so you can uh, sort of recycle those materials for straws? That's correct. The, the reason why we're having the invasive species come in is because the, the natural forest has been, uh, has been chopped down. So where there's this vacuum, you very often find um, these uh, alien species uh, coming in, uh, introduced in, in, by various means, and, and then they take over very quickly So uh, because they don't really have any competition. So in a lot of areas, we're removing the alien vegetation and replanting the, um, the indigenous species back, uh, back in, the, in, the, in the forest again. Yeah, it seems like, yeah, it seems like a really good opportunity for, for people to go out there because um, I noticed on your website there was... On, on some of your values, 
on, on the, the mission page, it did say to make it more accessible for people to actually get involved in conservation. Absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of people, um, you know, want to be involved in conservation. A lot of students uh, prior to their, their first years at university, you know, they're not really sure. Do they want to become an endemologist? Do they want to become a marine biologist? What, whatever the case is. And they can come out and do, you know, uh, up to six months practical with us and decide if this is the field they actually want to participate in. And, um, you know, we've had, uh, we've had a, quite a lot of students change courses uh, or change, change their, their uh, direction, um, professional direction as such. And um, that's, uh, that, that's the whole concept is to have this platform, have a safe environment where people from all walks of life and all ages can actually join, um, join in and, uh, and do what they enjoy most. Because they, they generally isn't... Um, uh, that type of facility, you know, and we also have a lot of trained staff, qualified people that are that are there to assist. And we have a lot of local knowledge with local guys that have grown up and lived in the forest their entire lives um, that can take you through and show you all sorts of things. And we also have a contract with the Lockerbie National Park, which is a very famous national park on Nossi Island, which is primary forest <clears throat> and uh, undisturbed for uh, for centuries. And uh, it has a lot of very interesting species and we've got access, direct access into that park at all times. So we, we're very fortunate in terms of that. Yeah, that's, yeah it's, it's really interesting that you've set this up because yeah, it does make it more accessible. And just like, like you said, on, from an educational standpoint, a lot of people before they go to university, they're not sure what kind of area of biology or science they want to specialize in or, or, or be it sort of herpetology or zoology. So yeah, I think that'd be a good opportunity for people to go out there and practice the sort of different trades themselves to then make an educated decision. I think that's yeah, that's a great idea. What what sort of things do you do with um, the communities in Madagascar? Be it with English teaching or do, do you do any uh, teaching on uh, sort of biodiversity and respecting the sort of the wildlife out there? What what, what are the views like for, of Madagascan people in general? Are they do they tend to lean towards uh, saving the environment and being eco-friendly or do they lean towards because i know there's there's not a massive amount of money in madagascar are they more about sort of capitalizing on the resources like the the gold um all that they have it's quite widely spread throughout madagascar yeah you know one of the problems is that madagascar is one of the poorest countries in the world and where poor countries are there's always a lack of education and when there's a lack of education there's a lack of conservation and uh and that's, uh, that's really a problem, you know, um, and that's why you see such a lot of deforestation and, uh, and illegal logging and things like that. So it's problematic. But um, there, there, there is a lot of inroads that have been made with regards to uh, tightening security in national parks and, and, um, and uh, clamp down on illegal trade in wildlife. It's one of the big problems in Madagascar. We have a really big uh, Chinese influence that uh, are continually smuggling um, all sorts of uh, animals from tortoises to lemurs to to um, uh, chameleons uh, back to uh, back to China uh, and Vietnam and these countries. So that's that's really problematic. Um, you know, most Malagasy's live from hand to mouth. They they very rural. Uh, <clears throat> they grow the um, they own crops and things like that, and they obviously harvest what they can from the ocean. Um, not in an industrial way, but just you know, in a subsistence on a subsistence level. So um, you know, we've had an area in front of uh, one of our camps. They uh, declared a, a marine uh, protected area. It's like a not a national park, but it's a an area where you're not allowed to uh, fish and and take resources from. And that wasn't too difficult to to get uh, organised. Uh, this area of the mountain that we're busy doing at the moment uh, in terms of the reforestation, that was also, also you know, it took some work, but it, it wasn't uh, insurmountable. So the locals understand the necessity, but you need to give them alternatives because you can't, you can't, you can't arrive as an outsider and say, hey, listen, guys, we've got to stop doing this, stop doing that, stop doing the next thing, and you don't provide a, an alternative solution. So we're trying to increase tourism, so that's an avenue, and we're trying to explain to them that, look, 
you know, when the tourists come here, they don't want to see the plastic on the ground. They don't want to see all the, all the, all the trees being chopped down. They don't want to see you walking around with captured um, wildlife and things like that. And so those are the kind of messages that we're getting across. Um, in terms of the educational process that we have in the schools, most of the schools we, we teach English at are junior school uh, uh, school level. And there we concentrate on, on the very simple things about putting uh, waste in, um, in bins and things like that, not, to, not just tossing your, your sweet wrapper. Um, and uh, we talk about sustainability and things like that to them. We also teach English in, um, to adults as well in the Department of uh, Police. We've also got um, uh, English teachers at, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Customs. And um, uh, we also teach English in the national parks for the, for the guides. Um, and at all of those, all of those uh, uh, venues, we, we try and emphasize the fact that we need to keep our oceans clean. And, um, you know, this all impacts uh, directly in some form uh, to tourism and to sustainability in the long term. So that's really some of the, the core messages. And we, we need to keep it simple there because um, it's, uh, it can be quite tricky otherwise. Um, one of the things we've done, for example, we've taken the plasticoceans.org uh, video that was a very well-known video. I'm sure you, you've seen it about uh, the whale that got all the plastic in its stomach and all these type of things. And we've, um, we've uh, taken that video and we've translated it into Malagasy. And we show that um, at a, that little documentary at a lot of the little remote villages all over the countryside. Um, and they are really thrilled by it because first of all, they've never had an outdoor, outdoor movie set up before. And then secondly, it's, you know, a lot of them have never come in, into, into contact um, or seen whales and things like that. So for them, it's a, a first in many respects. And a lot of the time they ask us to come back and even uh, show the movie again. And um, we find a, a marked difference in their approach to what they do with their waste uh, in many cases. Yes, well, it seems like, yeah, it seems really educational what you're doing. And I know what you're saying when you said before that um, <clears throat> a Westerner can't just go over there and start saying, oh, you need to start not chopping down trees or doing this, doing that. Because, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite rich, especially coming from somebody from the UK. I mean, I know Madagascar have got quite a lot of species that are crit critically endangered, but in the UK, we've got no species at all that are left. You know, there's no uh, wild bears or wild, wild wolves, and there's loads of different types of birds and stuff that have been made extinct over the years. So it's quite, I mean, we, we destroyed our sort of natural habitat hundreds of years ago. At least they've still got a bit of it left. So you've got to give them credit where it's due, really. Um, so how does somebody from, from England, for example, how, how, how do they uh, get to Madagascar and get involved with your organisation? What's you know, from, from start to finish, do they need any vaccinations? Do they need like, mosquito nets or what, what kind of equipment do they need? How do they organise it with you? Yeah, so look, um, obviously, once the COVID situation has improved, you can fly, most people fly in from uh, London uh, to uh, Addis Ababa, and Addis Ababa directly into Nasi B. Uh, we would then fetch uh, the individual at the airport and we would take them through to our camp. And then uh, depending on what type of program they were interested in, um, you know, we would, we would start with that. What I would suggest in your case and what we've done in the past is a number of bespoke tours. So in other words, if you could get a group of people together, six or eight or 10 or whatever the case is, we would, and you gave me your points of interest, we would then put together a, um, a tour for you with the appropriate guides and the appropriate people to make sure that you guys saw the, uh, the kind of things that you wanted to see. And, um, and then we would, make, we would, we would manage the, the, whole, the whole tour as such from, from start to end. Um, and um, we have various facilities in Madagascar, around Madagascar, and we've got a very big infrastructure in terms of uh, moving people around, either via boats or via vehicles or whatever the case is. So um, we've, uh, as I said, we've done quite a few of these things for people with different interests. Some people are only interested in, marine, in uh, the marine side of it with whale sharks and uh, turtles. And then we center a, a seven day or 10 day package around that for them. So if you, if you gave me your, your guidelines, I'd be able to put a program and cost together for you. Oh, that's amazing. And, and that's something that 
I, I don't think anybody else can can offer that kind of service either. I think that's that's a fantastic service. It makes it more accessible for people. I know definitely my subscribers would want to see chameleons in the wild, um, day geckos and and golden mantellas if it if it's at all possible. But I'm a, I'm aware that a lot of the golden mantellas are in quite remote locations in Madagascar, and more towards like the north and the the east east side of, of Madagascar. Yeah, but you know, that's that's not a problem because there are natural parks there. There's one not too far from us um, that uh, we take a lot of our uh, a lot of our students through to. Uh, so we can plan a trip if, I, if, I, if you give me the kind of things you want to see and the things you want to do. And also the physical fitness of some of the people because, you know, um, some of the parks and some of the forest areas are a little bit difficult to to uh, to walk through. One needs to have a certain level of fitness. You can't um, you can't be extremely overweight and uh, have, have you know don't walk at all because uh, you know if you want to see stuff in the forest you've got to get into the forest. Mm. So if you give me those parameters, I could uh, I could build a, a tour for you guys. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, I'll definitely be passing that on. So it's. Uh, can you just remind me about the website? So it's Mad madagascarvolunteer.com, is it? That's correct, yeah. So that, that's basically our site for, uh, for our uh, people that are wanting to participate in our volunteer programs as such. If you wanted to do that, that's also fine. But um, coming out uh, specifically to see a, a number of things, I'd rather put a, um, a, uh, uh, an independent package together for you to ensure that you're going to you're going to see all the things that you want to see. I, yeah, I'll get you into the, like the Lockerbie National Park. Uh, there's a couple of the other, other parks uh, up towards Diego, which are very interesting, really nice walks. Uh, I've got some very good uh, guides that are, are, are very knowledgeable and also speak English very well. So um, you won't have a communication, <coughs> excuse me, you won't have a communication um, uh, problem with them. Um, and then also you can you can see a bit of a bit of variety as well. You're not stuck to sort of one location or one forest area. That that would be really good because especially traveling to the other side of the world and you don't want to be stuck in one place. Do you? It's good to know that there's somebody out there that can can sort of uh, coordinate everything, get get you to the right place that you need to be, and make make sure your trip is as meaningful as possible. Because for many people, it would be sort of a once in a lifetime opportunity to go out in Madagascar and and take part in conservation or at least see see the wild and, and contribute to the economy a bit but yeah um i think i've got all the information uh, that i need about the organization um is there anything you wanted to add to uh, just uh, maybe a message or anything to to my subscribers you, you don't have to it's just uh, if you wanted to to say something you can yeah, well, Joe, from from uh, our side, you know, from uh, MRCR side, we really appreciate folks like yourself taking an interest in uh, in what we do. Uh, I think it's in, important that there's there's a link with uh, with our organisation and guys like yourself and your subscribers, because without um, without without interest, we you know, all our conservation efforts will surely fail. So um, I'll certainly do my best to make sure that we, uh, we, we meet your expectations in Madagascar and uh, send me an email with what you guys want to do. I'll put a nice schedule together for you. And uh, I've absolutely no doubt that your sub subscribers that do come out there will have a lot of fun and uh, be quite uh, mesmerized uh, what magical Madagascar has to offer them. Mm. Well, thank you very much, David. I'll, I'll be passing this on to the subscribers and also the the Facebook groups that we've got in the UK for keeping reptiles and amphibians. People are always going on about wanting to explore the, the wild environment and, and you're making it possible. So, um, yeah, I appreciate that. And I won't take any more of your time. I probably appreciate this time in the morning. Um, and I hope you have a nice day. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Thank you very right. much. And I look forward to receiving your email. Yeah, I'll send you, um, I'll send you the link of the video when I upload it as well. Yeah, no, that'll be great. I had a look uh, last night at a couple of the other videos that you've done. I like them a lot. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. It started yeah. just. I was just keeping tree frogs in my bedroom, and then it's just sort of expanded. Just got more and more yeah. subscribers, and, and at the moment, I'm, I'm quite influential with people within the reptile hobby in the UK. So I'm just trying yeah. trying to do my best to try and help people access these conservation efforts, and yeah, okay. with a bit of luck. Tell me, what, what's your favourite reptile? 
That'll be the Golden Mantella. From Madagascar. Oh, sorry, from sorry, Madagascar. I'm, amphibian Golden Mantella. Uh, reptile. Okay. It's probably... I like the Brookesia dwarf chameleon okay. in Madagascar. Yeah. Okay. That, that, Mine, mine's the green, uh, the green Madagascan green uh, gecko. All right. I haven't... Yeah. Uh, are they quite... One minute, let me just Google. Are they quite common in Madagascar? Very, or? very common. Very common. The, the, the reason why I like them is because they actually become quite tame. All right. And uh, yeah, so if you, if you have breakfast in the same place every morning, you'll find that they actually come out and uh, they'll start eating your, uh, your honey or your jam and stuff like that, you know? Ah, so right. They yeah. yeah they the end up having breakfast with you. Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's just come up now, the uh, Madagascan bear gecko. Yeah, quite a lot of people keep them in the UK. And the, the... Absolutely. All around the world, in fact, in the United States as well. Yeah, what well, I think one should keep a species of day gecko. You just fall in love with them, and, and that's just what you keep forever. I think that's what I've experienced. And yeah. there's quite a lot of there's quite a lot of people that are on these Facebook groups that just swear by day geckos, and they're always sharing how how tame they're they are. Good fun. They've got quite personalities. Yeah, but I think sometimes you can you can get a slightly aggressive one. But yeah, by and large, I think they're uh, quite they, they do get aggressive because they get a bit territorial sometimes. You know. Yeah, I've, I've especially heard around light bulbs, light bulbs, because they they hunt the mosquitoes at night when the when the lights uh, attract the mosquitoes, and then you find the geckos fight for territory, you know. Oh right, yeah. yeah, well, yeah. There's there's always some horror stories of people keeping them together. I think I think I'm not I'm, I'm not an expert in day geckos, but I, I think you you're better off. I think you have to you pair them by sex or just keep them. Uh, on their own because they can be quite territorial and i mean you, they can, expect, they can. you can you can see the they're, they're quite cute looking but they can cause quite a lot of damage on each other absolutely absolutely yeah that, that's, but it's good that's, to have it's good to have a, a a vertical type of uh accommodation for them because they don't really like being kept together in a in a fish tank type of environment it needs to it needs to have some height on it because they you know they sort of vertical climbers up and down the whole time not really sideways animals so, that, that, yeah, that's probably what people are sort of struggling with because, yeah, it, our houses aren't particularly tall and a, a lot of keepers are quite, they'll, they'll try and scrimp and scrape on a quite a small tank, maybe four to five centimetres high, but in the wild, yeah. you'll be climbing right to the top yeah. of the trees, won't they, sir? Absolutely, absolutely. But, but that, Joe, awesome cool. speaking to you. I look forward to your, receiving your mail. We'll chat again. Thanks for yeah, reaching yeah, out. Definitely. Yeah, I'll keep, I'll keep in touch with you. And yeah, thank you very much for your time. Awesome. Have, have, have a nice day. Speak to you soon. You too, mate. Bye. Bye-bye.